So let's bring in Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst, Kat Mary Catherine Hamm as well, editor at large for hotair.com, and the co author of End of Discussion. Welcome uh, to both of you. Um, curious back and forth there this morning. Mary Catherine, what do you think? Well, it brings out a couple things which I think are curious that a lot of folks in the uh, in the GOP base would normally uh, not cotton to, which is sort of uh, being a little over friendly to Putin. Uh, and then this guy's just not well versed, I think, in what Putin is all about. And so there's like this sort of reflexive admiration for a leader, uh, but he hasn't really thought about the implications of that. And I think you see that in a lot of Donald Trump interviews. Yeah. And then one, uh, he said, well, we, we kill a lot of people, too. I found that so, I guess, troubling, disturbing, Martha. I'm not sure what he's talking about. I mean, you know, this touches on something that came up in the debate this week, which is, you know, carpet bombing or killing the, the families of terrorists. And people said, you know, that's in violation of conventions. And he said, well, they kill us and we can't kill them. And it was like, well, yeah, but we kill a terrorist. We don't want to kill innocent people. But I, I think it goes back to what Mary Catherine was saying. He interprets this as the forceful leader, that our enemies, whether they're Russian or Chinese, will be intimidated. They'll know that we are serious. I think he's kind of, Trump is the opposite of Obama. Obama tends to be a little too cool at times. Trump may be a little too yeah. hot at times. You know, I mean, a Joe, Joe Scarborough basically, you know, asked him, what did you mean by that? And it kind of went on a little bit, and he didn't really take it back. And then Joe Scarborough sort of went back again for another round and said, you're not okay with the killing of journalists, right? And he said, oh, you know, something like, well, no, of course not. But, yeah. um, it, you know, it, it took a while to get there, Mary Catherine. And, um, you know, I mean, my initial reaction was that it was a surprising back and forth. I'm watching it in my office this morning. And then you wonder, well, you know, does, does, it, does it matter? Because it doesn't seem to matter. Donald Trump seems to say, you know, right. whatever he wants and sometimes people are shocked sometimes people are very supportive uh, he obviously has a huge following but then it just goes away yeah I think it's almost because he does things that are shocking or politically unorthodox so often uh, that you can't sort of see the impact of each of those and he doesn't often uh, back off of them entirely but that last comment about we kill a lot of people too again indicative of this sort of moral relative relativism that the the right certainly wouldn't be a fan of normally but if it's donald trump right. many of his fans will just say it's a-okay yeah i mean it, it it almost reminded me a little bit of of uh the president one when he got in trouble or you know critics got riled up when he said he was talking about islamic radicalism which he didn't refer to as that but he said you know well christians have killed people you know thousands of years ago um as well there's guilt on all sides when it comes to this kind of religious fervor was the suggestion you know so so i you know i would like for donald trump to take the opportunity and you know we'd love for him to come do it here <laughs> to kind yeah, of explain right. a little bit more about what he meant when he said you know well we kill lots of people too well, I, that's what I said. That's how I started with you when you asked the question, Martha, because for me, it was puzzling. I just, I don't know about the United States government killing journalists. I, I've been in Mexico where Mexican officials oftentimes are corrupted by the drug cartels and the drug cartels kill journalists. I know that. I know what goes on in places like Russia. And I don't, you know, I'm not trying to be, wave the red, white, and blue. I just don't think that happens here. Yeah, I, I mean, he did, as I said, eventually come around to saying that, no, he was not in favor of that, which, of course, everybody um, would assume. Uh, I want to play another soundbite uh, that we have here. This is the one from, from the exchange with uh, Barbara Walters about winning and losing. Let's watch this. If you lose the Republican nomination, are you a loser? Certain way, yeah. Hate to say it. If I lost the nomination, yeah, I guess I'd call myself a loser. I've never said that about myself before. Look, I want to win. I want to make America great again. If I lose the nomination, not so good. Mm. Another interesting back and forth there. Mary Catherine, your thoughts? Yeah, I thought it was sort of a fun moment. And I'm surprised he didn't just say, well, I'm not going to lose. So that's it's, it's a moot point. Um, it was an interesting moment. And this is the thing about Donald Trump. He's so good at understanding what plays. If he lost the nomination, he'd probably make a viral video calling himself a loser and it would go crazy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is this is how he does business. 
You know, I also want to show you one more thing here, um, and it's a, a piece from a Peggy Noonan uh, editorial that was out this morning. Um, let's put that up on the screen because it talks about the different nature that has a, sort of surfaced here between the typical way that people think about Democrats and the people that the way people think about Republicans. And in it, in the Wall Street Journal today, she writes, the, de the Democrats were once alive, chaotic, and brawling. The Republicans stayed and orderly. Mm. Not anymore. She goes on to say, it is the Democrats who are accepting a coronation. The Republicans who said no to ancestral claims. Mary Catherine, what do you think about that? Well, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Now, <laughs> how that plays out in the actual primary and the, the chaos that comes with it uh, doesn't always end up giving you the best product, I don't think. And so that's that's what you have to decide, whether you want this top-down thing that gives you Hillary Clinton, which, by the way, not the greatest product either. <laughs> um, but I do think there's truth to what she's saying in the, in the differences between the parties right now. Yeah, For sure, are. the grassroots of the GOP are saying, we don't have to listen to you guys. Right. One quick thought on that. we got to go. Well, I think, the, I think the Republican Party is in chaos right now, and I think that's what you're seeing play out in the primary process. And it's, you know, it's fractured. The party is so chaotic, and that's why people are talking about things like a brokered convention, which would be even more chaotic. So maybe Trump it's is, a live, a, is representative right. of that. <laughs> it's Plenty a live, of time to right. There's no cast doubt about that. Still. Um, Mary Catherine and Juan, Merry Christmas Thank to you. you. Thanks Merry for being Christmas here. Merry Christmas to you guys. We'll see you soon.